evening, everyone. This is, what is this, Sunday the 23rd. Welcome to the call. I see so many beautiful faces out there. I got Miss Akiko from Japan. Mr. Marvin Carter showing the guns. Miss Diane Collins, welcome from us, from uh, the other side of the pond, basically. And then oh, I got my daughter on here. I better better do things right now. Hi, babe. How you doing? <clears throat> and I got Mrs. Carolyn, this Mr. Payon from over the other side of the pond. Sergio, everybody's on this call. Good to have you guys. Good to have you guys, Mr. Thomas. Mr. Thomas, you want to click in at all, sir? No, sir. Go ahead. I just want to say thank you, everybody, for being on the call today, tomorrow morning. Uh, tomorrow morning, we'll be back with uh, Miss Giles and Drissel tomorrow morning, and I'm looking forward to the night's training. Everybody get your notepads and pens and get ready to see, to hear what thus say Regional Director Chris King and Ms. Rose Guerrero. Back in your hand, sir, and thank you for all you're doing. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Uh, like I say, it's Sunday. It's, it's uh, tomorrow's like the, the best day of the week because it starts it off and we can shoot ourselves out of a cannon. We're just sit back on the couch. I mean, the choices, choices either kill us or they pay us. So, uh, but anyway, I want to thank you guys for being on a call. Thank you, Mr. Thomas, for letting us share from our hearts. Um, Rose and I have uh, been regional directors here for a few years, uh, growing business. And, uh, and, and you got to understand, this has been part-time around, uh, around our careers. And uh, to be able to do something and grow something and actually been, being able to find people who are better than me that actually grow it faster than me has been a huge blessing. So uh, thank you, Mr. Thomas. Uh, shout out to, hey, guys, uh, really right now for our firemen here in California, and I know because I walked in those shoes, right now they're getting their butts handed to them. We've got winds, we've got high fire danger, and uh, they're, they're getting – it's, it's bad. We just lost a helicopter pilot out by my old station on a fire up there in the hills. So uh, it's really rough. So a lot of prayers out to the firemen and police that are uh, out there handling all that. So, and a big shout out to our military for, uh, for keeping us safe here. So uh, with that being said, guys, I don't, I don't have any clips. I, I look for some clips to do some of the stuff I wanted to talk about, but they, they didn't have it. Um, which is fine. So I did a lot of reading uh, past couple of days and uh, watched a few things, but I want to go over some stuff here. So please bear with me. There's not going to be a lot of note taking here at the beginning, but I'm going to let you know when you need to start taking notes because I got some stuff that'll kick in for you, if, if you know what I mean, to get, take it to that next level or, or put you in a position where you can do more, kind of like Ms. Collins did the other day. So I'm going to use you a little bit, Ms. Collins, because I, I, uh, today, because I know I, I've got you in my, my, my thing here. So but I'm going to read something to you guys. So uh, let me go here. All right. So it, it's, it's, my topic is whose life will you save? All right. So the other day I caught myself, I was reading some stories uh, actually over the past couple of days and it gets me all pumped up when you read those things. And so I hope it'll do the same for you. And, uh, but I was reading about people who have these feats of superhuman strength. Okay. And every, has anybody heard of the people like, oh, someone did this and someone did that? Like, oh my gosh, how did, that's not possible for humans. But yet they're human and they still did it. So basically in a handful of unusual cases, people have tapped into a normally inaccessible super strength. And I like to call it a hidden Hercules. Okay. So what's happening here? So, so most of us have heard about these crazy stories and that people have, that have done, made the impossible possible. But here's what's crazy. They found this superhuman strength when someone's life was at jeopardy. Not when their cupcake was falling off the table to the ground, when someone's life was in danger, okay? So that, that's the big difference here. I'm gonna give you some stories here. So um, there's a guy who saw a woman who's, and I'm not sure how it happened because it doesn't explain it or didn't explain it because it was back in 1962. Uh, a guy saw a woman lift her car off her baby. Not sure how it got there, but a woman. Now, who could do that? But it was her baby, right? Um, here's another one. In, uh, in 82, so this lady's son was working underneath her car, his car, and he was fixing it up. Well, the vehicle popped off the jacks and fell on him. He's underneath. He can't get the cars on him. So the lady goes out. Here's what's crazy. 
the lady in it that says Miss Angelo Cavallo lifted the car high enough and long enough for two neighbors to replace the jacks and pull her son out from underneath the car. <laughs> That's crazy. That was great until I read the next one. All right. Here's a mother's love. Do not ever underestimate this. So in 2006, and I, it's up in Quebec, right? And I can't even say her name either. But she saved several children by fighting a polar bear until local hunters shot it. Like, <laughs> are you kidding? Who fights a polar bear? Sis, I know you're on a call, but if my kids are being attacked by a polar bear, it's like, man, I really love those kids. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I always say that because my daughter's on the call. So, but who does those things? Who's capable of having that kind of bravery, you know, with their kids? They always, in, in ACN, they've used the, the, the term that if uh, you were on the top of a building and your baby was on the top of another building and there was a little two by six running from one building to the other, you really hesitate to walk across that board because your baby's just sitting there. It's safe, right? It's in its playpen. It's not going anywhere. But you would really hesitate to walk across that board to the other building to save your child or to get your child. But if you set that other building on fire, you would run across that two by six, whether you're a woman or female, to save your baby. That's, that is just what we do. But you think, how do these people come up with this courageous things or this, this superhuman strength, right? And there's, like I say, there was like nine, 10 more stories of feats that people actually did to save someone. Crab, one guy lifted a helicopter just got down, lifted a helicopter off a guy who was, it was trapped on his legs. And it's just like, who does these things? But who are these people, right? Are, are they X-Men? Are they Avengers? I mean, who are they? No, they're not any of that. These people are you. These people are us. These people, it's, who, it, it's what we have capable inside of us. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's what's capable inside of us. So this should give you an idea about the strength, right? So, <clears throat> and power you need. So, the world record deadlift it was set by Zendrunas Zakavas or Zavakas, Zavikas. I mean, that sounds powerful, right? Zavikas. That's like this guy, like Greek, you know, warrior, right? So, the world record is set at 1,155 pounds, or Miss Collins at 524 kilograms. Okay? So, what we're talking about 1,155 pounds is the world record deadlift. This is someone who eats right, trains right, and is in it 24-7 to get where – you don't set a world record by this being a hobby. <clears throat> so this is what he does. Now, the vehicles and the objects we're talking about, about the people lift up, were roughly around close to 3,000 pounds. And that's about a thousand kilograms, Miss Collins. So trying to help out our, our people across the pond with the kilogram thing. So, um, and these people look, they're untrained. They don't eat right, but they had an enormous why. Enormous why, okay? So how is Hercules strength even possible? Well, one of the major clues, and this was a study. So what I read was a study. So it had, it didn't just have someone's opinion. It had studied facts. <clears throat> but what the, uh, the research has said is the one major clue is that humans are quite simply stronger than we realize. Crazy, right? <clears throat> and we were to exert our muscles to or beyond their absolute maximum, we would tear muscle, ligament, tendons, and break bones, leaving us in dire straits. So the one thing is our brains, right? Well, as Mr. Thomas always telling us, it starts here. Starts here, right? Our brains are always trying to make sure we don't push ourselves too far so that we damage ourselves. Your brain. Well, that phone call is going to be too tough. That customer will never become, or that person will never become your customer. You see what I'm saying? Right here, your brain is going to keep you safe, okay? But make my, make, make, make my, Make no mistake, there is something to be said about superhuman strength at the time people face life or death situations. Now, I pray all of you never have to be put in that situation. 
Um, there was times we ran on a fire line um, or, or in vehicle accidents and things were happening. And when you're in it, you don't know, you know, everyone's just doing what they got to do to, to, to keep everybody safe. But, you know, we could have, but I, but I pray you guys are never, I know what those situations are like, and I pray you guys never have to be in those situations. All right. But here, here's my question. Where is your super, superhuman strength? When it comes to your why, yours or your family's lives, the time you're able to spend with them, money so you no longer have to work overtime to work two or three jobs or live paycheck to paycheck. When is your success or failure in this business going to be treated like a life and death situation? In one of the previous stories, uh, going to show you the possibilities that you can do something that's not superhuman. See, so all those stories about superhuman strength. Now I'm going over here to your why being superhuman, but your actions aren't. Because it's not, it's not superhuman to work two hours a day. When you're done with your job, you're end of your day, you're exhausted. And Miss Collins proved that. She made it happen. She talked about that the other day. Amazing. How about getting, uh, 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 where, I'm sorry about that. Let me catch my place here. Uh, or how about getting online to open up your possibilities for, uh, to, to, to uh, acquire more names and numbers, people who are interested in, in doing something outside of what they're doing, right? How about calling five people? That, that, this is not superhuman stuff. How about getting a new customer? Not superhuman. How about reconnecting with an old IBO to see where they stand and where they're going? Not superhuman. That was no superhuman strength. You didn't lift a 5,000 to 3,000 pound car, a helicopter. You didn't run into a burning building. You didn't do any of those things. But it's just being in action in your business. Okay? So when is a situation in your life going to cause you to go above and beyond for uh, your comfort zone to save yourself? This isn't life or death, but maybe we should start treating this like it is. Heck, if it gets us into action, more, maybe we should start treating it like that. Okay, scientists have already, all, scientists, like I said, have already proven we can do more. And doing what we do in ACN is not going to cost us our life. So let's do this together, guys. Now, if you, if you think about it, how do these people do something superhuman? Okay, remember the brain. The brain, right? Because these guys didn't have time to think about it. They had no time to analyze the situation. They had no time to check to see if the scene was safe. They just reacted. See, the problem is we think too much. And obviously, we all overthink this business. We've all been in that shoes. If you're not shaking your head right, you're lying to yourself. Okay? Here's something to make that, that might help you guys. And now is where you want to make sure you start taking notes. Because here's an idea, right? So have you ever considered like being in those stories with your business? So if you think about the business, those guys just reacted. Something happened, boom, they just reacted. And their life was safe, right? Something happened, boom. Pulled someone out of the way of something falling. It, it, it happens all the time, right? No time to think. What if you utilize the five-second rule and just reacted? For the week, you cannot think about what you got to do, know what you got to, and just do it. You got five seconds. Okay, now I'm going to read this, but this is about uh, uh, this, this young lady who, who writes about this. It, it, the, the, the five second rule is a book. I have the book and I tried to look for it, but I couldn't find it. But how the five second rule can help you fight the urge to procrastinate. We've all done it, hit the snooze button a few more times than necessary on a big day. Yeah. You know, the reluctancy to face new challenges, make a phone call, or finish a major project has affected us all at one point in time uh, or another, okay? However, habitual procrastination can create limitations for entrepreneurs. It didn't say restaurant owners. It did entrepreneurs. What is this? This business is full of entrepreneurs. Who underestimate the importance of taking action immediately? All right, procrastination can easily become a habit, right? In the early stages of building, and then she goes on, she's going to talk about it. In the early stages of building her own business years ago, 
She used to procrastinate due to the fear of rejection. Anybody a little fear of rejection? Might not be your business, but my, my, you know, they don't think it'll be my customer. Oh, they're already successful. But man, all the time, right? So as I, and she talks about it, she prepared her action list for the day prior on the day of implementation, I would find ways to negate the significance of taking action on a difficult task simply due to fear. It's our brains, we're thinking about it. And the more you think about it, the bigger the fear becomes, right? So she says the alarm would go off the next day and the task still needed to be done. The losses due to the inactivity began to add up. How much further could you be if you didn't procrastinate getting customers or business partners? Ooh, right? How about negative self-talk? Anybody do any negative self-talk? Sabotaging behaviors, indecisiveness, and she's talking about all this. We've done it because we thought about it, right? She says, building company takes resilience, requires the elimination of procrastination. I'm gonna say that again, building a company, building your ACN business takes resilience and requires the elimination of procrastination. Now, the individual's name is Mel Robbins, okay, the leading expert on kicking, uh, kicking the habit of procrastination. And that's the best-selling author of the five-second rule. Sound advice in overcoming the habit of doubt by using a simple technique to conquer each day. Simple, so we all have it. Now, what's the simple technique we need to conquer each day, right? So the book provides a unique approach to eliminating procrastination by cutting down to hold you accountable. Now, re the research is backed by science, and she credits her discovery of the method to watching a commercial about launching a rocket ship. <laughs> when you thought commercials were no good, look what happened. All right? So the moment your instincts fire up, but you feel yourself hesitate, that's when you use the five second rule. All right, we all agree, we understand. We're gonna go do something, but we hesitate. We, gotta, we have to kick the five second rule in. Got it? So here's what we're gonna happen. You have five seconds. So this is when the five, so this is when you gotta fire it up, you hesitate and like, ooh, wait, five second rule. So you got to start counting. You got five seconds, right? You start counting backwards from yourself. Five, four, three, two, one, and then you have to do it. You got to go. That's not you. No thinking. You have to count so you keep your mind <clears throat> occupied. I got to go to the gym. But five, four, three, two, one, and go now. You're thinking like, well, this counting, what? I just have to count, I'll just go to the gym. No, 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 you're not getting it, right? You have five seconds, start counting backwards. If you don't move within five seconds, here's what happens. This is scientific. If you don't move within five seconds, your brain will kill the idea and you'll talk yourself out of doing it. Bam. So Ms. Robbins makes it clear that the intent will lead to taking action. So the intent was starting to fire for the boom. So think about changing, won't change you, she says. To change, you have to take action. She describes that counting backwards from five will awaken, listen, will awaken the prefrontal cortex and allow you to move forward. Bam. Five seconds at a time, your life will change. All right. Lastly, Robbins is a true believer that motivation is garbage. As we begin to explore the issues of success and how motivation impacts leaders, she clarified further. If you keep waiting, right, this is motivation. If you keep waiting to feel ready to start your business, ask for a raise, move your business, or work to the next level, you name it. I can't promise it's ever going to happen. You'll never get there. Your feelings will hold you back. So Robbins recommends a consistent action that'll keep you moving forward. So the moment you feel the urge to hesitate, here are three things you can learn from the five second rule, which will increase your productivity and eliminate procrastination. See, here it is. So number one, 
You can only count backwards starting at five. You can't go to 10. You can't go to 15. You can't be like Austin Powers, 99. You start from five. Now listen, this action will give you an endpoint which will hold you accountable to take immediate action. You need to feel the fear and five, four, three, two, one, do it anyway. All right? Number two, take action. Procrastination is delaying the inevitable. <clears throat> and, it's our, and there are often habits that have grown over time. Man, it used to take you a, an hour to call somebody. Now it takes you a day. I'll get it tomorrow. You know what? If I call him before Friday, that'll be good. Oh, wow. It grows. It's alive. Okay. So successful leaders calculate their wins as a result of small victories each day. Once you're moving, it's easier to keep moving. What's that? Uh, uh, something in motion stays in motion. Something at rest stays at rest. An object in motion stays in motion. An object at rest stays at rest. Remember that. Okay, number three, be courageous. Procrastination is also a direct result of constant worry. And let's go to the Bible. Doesn't it say that worry doesn't add a minute to your life? Huh. So procrastination is a direct uh, result of constant worry and negative self-talk. We, Mr. Thomas just had a call. You got to get rid of all your negative things in your life and your negative family and friends but you keep your negative self-talk. Hmm. So to improve anything, you have to find your courage to try. Count from five. So it's funny here. Is she introduced her husband to the five second rule, right? A few months ago. And after years of watching him press the snooze button each morning today, right? Today she says <clears throat> that once the alarm goes up, I hear him make the countdown and launch into action. That's freaking hilarious. I love it. As a man who never began, a, was never a morning person, right? Never a morning person. It only takes five seconds on a daily self-assessment to hold yourself accountable and take action. That's it. So if you wake up in the morning, instead of pressing the snooze button, I know it's going to hurt and it's going to feel wrong at first, but instead of doing that, the alarm goes off, you turn it off. You say five, four, three, two, one, and you get up no matter how you feel. Watch what that does for that. You see, you're not just setting up getting out of bed. You're setting up your whole day and everything that you've got to do. It puts you on course if you maintain it. And don't talk yourself out of it. And you get rid of your negative self-talk. It puts you on course for the whole day to be in action. I gotta make a phone call. I don't wanna call this guy. Five, four, three, two, boom, and call. But it's what you gotta do. We gotta, guys, I'm, I'm only talking to you guys about this because this is something I do, right? So I have to confess, I'm, this is basically my story of things that I do, but what I've tried to do to overcome things. So I hope this helps you. So we got to stop analyzing the situation. If I got to, we rolled up on scene to, uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to think we had a, a rollover at two o'clock in the morning, you know, you, and why is it at the firehouse when the, when the fire, when the alarm goes off for respond alarm, you're wide awake. You're like, boom, you know, but if I, it was time to get up and go to work, I know I got to do it, but I kind of procrastinate but I know I got a procrastination time. Yeah, there you go, Miss Collins, snooze button, right? We do those things. Why? But we got to capitalize using our strengths. You, I've, I've seen almost everybody in real life <laughs> on the call, <laughs> except you, Miss Akiko. I haven't had a chance to meet you and, and, and a few others, Miss Payon and, and uh, Abs. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys and meeting you guys one day. But you guys are at where you're at because of your strengths, because you capitalized on them, right? You create the, those weaknesses and you keep building on them. But capitalize, using your strengths, 
But here, what's going to ignite your super, superhuman strength to put you into action? What's it going to take? You know, and, and, I, and I know your, your kids aren't, aren't, and they haven't been in a car accident. Something hasn't fallen on them that you have to lift thousands of pounds off them. I know that hasn't happened. But has it? Has it happened? Are you working and not able to maybe homeschool your child where they develop better relationship skills, where they're not receiving peer pressure? Our loved ones work in two jobs or at a job they don't like. Is it, is it really life or, life or death for them? I mean, it doesn't sound like it because there's nothing on top of them. But if you start looking at the life that's going on and what they have to do to get to, you know, I, I know I got a lot of friends that work in corrections. They're correctional officers at a prison. Like, hey, hey, bud, how's it going? How you doing today? Oh, good. how's work? Oh, man, it's good, Chris. It's good. Man, dude, you're lying. I tell them straight to their face, you lying. That's an impingement on your soul. Yeah, well, you, yeah, uh, yeah, but it pays the bills. Depression. So are those, are the lives of our loved ones, even though nothing's not, we could really be saving them. Saving ourselves from working ourselves to death. So if you think about it, there is some life or death involved in our lives. And we've got to recover that. Guys, utilize this five-second rule. I'm telling you. From experience, it works. <laughs> I had to do it to myself the other day. Yesterday, I didn't want to go on my bike ride. It's, it's hot here. It's smoky. This is at 7 in the morning. It's really smoky. We got some big, big fires. In fact, if you guys pray for Miss uh, Driscoll, her, her house was, uh, I don't know uh, um, how bad it got, but uh, they actually had to evacuate her. So this is evacuation for Miss Driscoll. Got the important things, went to the airport and flew to uh, her home in Wyoming. <laughs> so, but she still has her house there. So, and a lot of people, there's some people have lost. So, guys, there's stuff out there going on. Let's work this for ourselves. Free ourselves. This is Mr. Mr. Thomas always talking about. Do something. Put yourself in a five-second rule. Five, four, three, two, one, and do it. No matter how bad you don't want to do it, how bad you hate it. I had to call someone the other day. He called me, and, and he's a customer. He's already a customer, but he's always got these questions. I'm like, oh, man. <clears throat> I had to do it. We've got to take care of our people. That, that's what a servant does. You don't always want to be a servant, but sometimes you have to, to be a servant when you don't want to. Where there's other people out there to help. I didn't always want to put all my hot gear on and go out there and cut someone out of a car, but they needed my help. And that's how we have to look at this. Someone needs your help. There's people out there who are struggling their lives. They've got a 3,000 pound car on top of them. And unless you talk to them, they're going to perish. So it's nothing we can't do. We list it off. Phone calls, showing the plans, not life. It's life altering, but it's not life threatening. Mr. Thomas, that's all I got, boss. All right, you might be busy. So I want to thank you guys for being on the call. Tomorrow morning, guys, Miss Driscoll is going to set the lines on fire. Um, She's always got something amazing that, that she's going to talk about and something that's on her heart. And uh, even though, like I say, had to be evacuated, flew to Wyoming where it's safe, and she's still able to get on a call and, and, and do what she does for, for us. She might not want to be on a call tomorrow. She's got stuff going on, but she is. So you guys, God bless. Have a blessed night. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. God bless.